Hello my soccer universe. I'm once again kind of sicklish and so gonna do this from home. I wanted to do it yesterday in the evening but uh, it was just not possible. I am down with uh, just sleeping, 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 sleeping. So let's do it now. Uh, a recap of what happened during the week and then um, I will do another one that's a, a bit more detailed at the end of the week. Uh, well, a lot of cup competitions that we're gonna start, of course, um, at the German Cup, because there was the big, I don't say the biggest result, but probably the most interesting um, game in Bayern beating Heidenheim 5 4. We talked about that yesterday uh, in quite some detail. The other uh, games we had also um, Wednesday that uh, Werder, Werder Bremen got a kind of a lucky win against um, Schalke. 2-0, then we had Hamburg beating Paderborn 2-0, and another game of note was Leipzig winning at Augsburg in overtime, uh, where Leipzig got a late goal through Timo Werner in the 75th uh, minute. This was equalized by Finn Borason in the 94th, so in stoppage time, and then a really, really stupid uh, hands penalty right at the end of overtime, and Halstenberg makes the 2-1 for Leipzig, and so we uh, know the four teams that are in the semi-final, which is Hamburg, Leipzig, um, Bremen and Bayern. But we don't know who is playing who. I think the draw is maybe um, on the weekend. Um, that's when they typically do and might update you on that. Other cup competitions we had in France. Uh, I already said PSG beat Nantes 3-0. Um, which was a, a little bit of a contentious game, but more interestingly, have, I... I Probably got to use now this time to watch some highlights as well. Uh, Rennes beating Lyon in Lyon 3-2. I always said Rennes is a fun team to watch, but this is just crazy. Uh, I would have expected Lyon to be in the semi-final, but Rennes, I told you, and I keep telling um, colleagues, Rennes is one of those teams that are absolutely fun to watch. Next, let's go Premier League, uh, where there were actually... Uh, it was one of those really weird um, rounds where um, lots of games from different uh, rounds that had to be made up because of all the FA Cup and League Cup postponements. I honestly think this is a scheduling mistake. Um, and, you know, we have FA Cup now on Saturday. They don't have the FA Cup on Saturday. They make it midweek like everyone else. I know it's the hell out of FA Cup, but it's a cup competition like everyone else. I'm sorry to say it that way, uh, but I, I strongly feel, feel, feel about this. Um, we had now two games from day 33. Watford beating Fulham 4-1 and Wolves beating Manchester United uh, 2-1. Um, with that basically means with other results that Fulham is already really re re good. We talk about Wolves United that Sosha is now hitting his rough patch and that's exactly when he got the extension and that just didn't seem right. I would... I know there are probably some other considerations. I said it before. I probably would have waited it at least to make it public at the end of the season, something like that. Uh, then more games happened on, and this is where I'm really, um, really didn't quite understand it. Uh, three. We had another one from day thirty-three. City against Cardiff. Um, City. Manchester City against Cardiff. City two 0 then from day 31, a Tottenham against uh, Palace with opening of the new stadium. And then from day 27, Chelsea beating Brighton 3 0. So nothing really um, extraordinary. I just find this whole uh, tearing apart the match days uh, not all that great. And the same thing happened in France. Uh, let's get this, this as well. From Ligue 1, we had day 30, uh, Montpellier. 2-0 against Gergon and Strasbourg 4-0 against Reims. That's actually a pretty big result and this is another cathedral duel. Uh, Strasbourg Cathedral against Reims Cathedral. Take your pick which cathedral you like more, which um, which um, I want to say, what, what did I want to say? Yeah, which team you like more. Uh, let's quickly check if there was another. No, there was only uh, the cup game. Um, and I just want to make sure that I yeah, I'm done with France. Okay, then, so we have done with England, we're done with France. Let's quickly look at the Premier League table. Uh, 
we have now City again taking Leader Knights level on points. One point difference between City and Liverpool. Uh, Spurs is back again in third place, but having a game more than Arsenal, um, 64 to 63. And at the moment, it looks like those two are going in there. And United is dropping because we have Chelsea in fifth, uh, 63, and United 61. I don't see Wolves getting anywhere. Wolves might qualify by the FA Cup, and that might then actually eliminate uh, Manchester United. Remains to be seen. They have to win the whole thing. Uh, Watford is overtaking Leicester City, 46-44. Everton also drops by a spot for, uh, to 43. And as we know, uh, it is Fulham and Huddersfield are now relegated. Uh, it's still an even uh, picture because Southampton and Brighton have a game less. Uh, same goes for Arsenal. It's sometimes hard to follow, to, to be honest. I really like when a uh, whole round is played at once and, um, you know, the occasional postponement, but not the systematic postponement that is happening in England and France. Um, with all the French results, let's also look at Ligue 1. Uh, you know, PSG on top, Lille 60, Lyon 56. Saint-Étienne, uh, they made up a spot from last weekend with their Monday night win, so they're now ahead of Marseille, 49 and 4, 448. Um, and since the Coupe de France is at PSG and the Rennes, this is Rennes' last chance uh, to make Europa League, otherwise Marseille would get that spot. Montpellier, uh, 45, is behind Reims, 46. Uh, they might challenge for it. Nice, maybe Strasbourg. I just don't really see it. Nice 44, Strasbourg 42, Rennes 41. Uh, yeah. Um, and relegation zone, Kao gets out of last spot uh, with uh, their win, but uh, it still looks far off. I mean, the three on the bottom are between, are, are within two points, but then there's a seven point gap. So I actually think, despite their bad standing, not Monaco and Amiens look actually all right. Now to some more normal scheduling. Um, we go to Spain, where we had um, actually quite interesting slate, slate of shots. I talk a lot about the Villarreal-Barcelona game. Um, if you haven't seen highlights, it's worth watching, uh, namely the... I think it was the equalizer for Villarreal uh, to make it 2-2. Uh, how to see is Ter Stegen that much out of position. The goal by Bakka to make it 4-2 was great. Messi's free kick, you gotta watch it. And then the equalizer by Suarez was also worth watching. This was really a great game. Again, a highlight real, real goals. Atletico Madrid, Girona, 2-0. Means that Atletico Madrid made a point and now Atletico is only 8 points behind Barcelona. And there's a... Uh, match at the camp now this weekend let's see when it is it is uh saturday 8 45 so that's gonna be a big clash this is basically at latest last chance if barcelona wins that one then i think it's uh done done and dusted and given the um lineup that they used i think this is uh pretty clear that barcelona will play with the first team lineup espanol getafe 1-1 one, one. getafe is now um, they're hitting also their rough uh, patch. They look pretty safe for the for the Champions League, but as we see, it's a little bit closer now. Bilbao beats Levante 3-2. Um, Bilbao is also making their way up, uh, as we always said. Uh, Bilbao is now the team to be relegated, but we talked about them in the relegation zone for quite a while. Eibar, Rayo, 2-1. Uh, Huesca, Celta, that was also a huge game. Uh, I think Celta held a 3-1 lead from what I can see. Yes. Um, nah. I got this wrong. Sorry. I'm just looking at uh, had a 1-0 lead, then a 2-0 lead, then um, Uesca turned this around, made it 3-2, and then uh, in uh, 81st, 3-3. I, th I, I thought Celta held a held 3-1 lead. That was my... Uh, mistake. Um, Valencia, uh, Real Madrid, and 2-1. That's why I'm wearing a Valencia shirt. Valencia is really getting good now. Uh, I know. I always kept, kept saying, when I watch Valencia at home, this is always uh, chances, 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 and they don't make, make a goal, but now it comes back, and they're in pretty good form at the moment. I actually think that an argument Cope could made for them actually making it into the Champions League spots, um, especially since uh, 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 Getafe now lost, uh, uh, did, did, did lose, but uh, lost points. And the other one, Sevilla, I have Alaves, 
Sevilla needed that win. This was basically one of the last chances to really make a challenge for those Champions League spots, and they got that. Leganes Valladolid 1-0, and the Real Sociedad against Betis 2-1. Betis also. I sometimes don't understand. They, they play well at times, and then not. So this means the standings now. Uh, Barcelona 70, and Atletico 62. So that's basically the last chance this weekend, Atletico beating Barcelona. Then it will be Barcelona. Uh, then it, uh, it it will be Tatlaris. If I think even add, add, add a draw, this is Barcelona will win the title. Real Madrid with their loss to Valencia, fifty seven totally out of it, thirteen points behind. Getafe forty seven. Now here it starts. Valencia forty six, Sevilla forty six. I don't think Getafe will hold on. It will be fun if. Really, with that Getafe holds on, but I actually think that Valencia has a great chance of making the Champions League now. Sevilla uh, keeps itself alive, but they're too much of a, as much fun as they can be. Sevilla can become an absolutely amazing team uh, to watch, but as much fun as they can, can, can be, they're so inconsistent that I don't see it. Alaves now dropping uh, for the first time in seemingly ages out of the European spots at 44. Uh, Bilbao 43, uh, just ahead of Sociedad uh, at 40. So and then uh, the top 10 uh, rounded out by Betis at all with also four for 40 points. I think with some luck Bilbao can get in there. I don't think uh, Sociedad and Betis will be able to challenge for European spots. Uh, the bottom of the table: Eibar 39, Leganes 39. Espanyol now overtaking Girona. So for the best Catalan team behind Barcelona, we have now Girona. Levante, yeah, relegation. If you're honest, the relegation zone starts a little bit at Espanyol, although Espanyol and Girona still look kind of safe. Levante 32, Real Valladolid 30, and Villarreal uh, 30. This is, those teams are really in danger. Celta 29, Rayo 24, Huesca 23, and Huesca is actually making quite some rounds. I wouldn't be surprised with the showings that the head of state that Wesker maybe gets something and gets out of the relegation zone and two of that are above now get out of it. But the relegation battle is really, really exciting in Spain. And then um, quickly the Netherlands, the duel between PSV and Ajax hit another one. Uh, Ajax beat, I think, Emmen uh, 5-2. Let's check that. Yeah, 5-2 Emmen. And then uh, PSV followed it up with a 14 against Swalle. Uh, so yeah, it still remains two points between the two uh, big rivals. And then we go finally to Italy, where a lot of stories are in there. Um, unfortunately, the bad story is comes after the um, uh, Juve win at Cagliari with the racial abuse towards Matthew D and um, Moise Kane. I cannot say much that other, uh, other than that it's unacceptable, but I'm not that, that surprised, especially in Southern Europe when the societies are not as multicultural as they are, for instance, in Britain or America, uh, that this is still present. This is maybe, I mean, I, I hear a lot about it from the English media. This is probably the angle that they miss in that point. As unacceptable as it is, the case that this is still prevalent is because those societies are not as multicultural as most of the English speaking. Um, but to me, the bigger point is that Bonucci's comments absolutely degraded this man for me. I was so happy when he signed with Milan, then he doesn't show up at Milan, um, really plays a bad season. And then on top of that, he moves back to Juventus at the first sign that he can move back there. He was the freaking captain of Milan. So already there at character issues, and then his comments, and then his a sort of non-apology apology right afterwards, where it just puts the blame away from me, and it does not follow up with saying, "Yeah, I stand behind my uh, players." This celebration of Moise Kane, I'm sorry, was not in any way provoking, and if it was provoking the fans, they deserve to be provoked. I'm sorry about to say that. So as much sympathy as I have for Cagliari, this is absolutely unacceptable. At all. should not happen at all. Uh, but the whole issue is much deeper rooted and needs to be attacked uh, right from the get-go. 
And I'm sorry, it doesn't help when your own teammates are not behind you. If I was Matuidi or uh, indeed Moise Kane, I honestly, I would talk to Chiellini. If I'm the coach, I'm suspending Chiellini for at least a week, even if it means the Champions League. There is a bigger issue there. And I think everyone should support uh, Matuidi if they really want to walk off. Uh, for now, I hear only, uh, we are going to walk off, we are going to walk off, and no one is doing it. I really wish that a player would just say, okay, we walk off the pitch. There is no other way around this. But then there were also a whole slate of results in Italy. Um, so that was Tuesday. We had, of course, the Milan result, 1-1. That made me very unhappy. But then Wednesday results were also interesting. Napoli losing at Empoli 2-1. Roma 2-2 Fiorentina. We talked about that. Inter 4-0 at Genoa. With yes, yeah, the, the whole Icardi sorry, Icardi going back, scoring uh, again. Then the Inter fans initially cel celebrating his goal before the couples in the curva kind of saying, no, we're not celebrating Icardi at all. And the whole Spalletti uh, one day saying Icardi is not Messi and Ronaldo the other day, then the next day coming out and literally saying the opposite that Icardi is, uh, is even more important to us than Messi and Ronaldo are for their respective teams it's a saga that I honestly don't want to spend much time on uh, but it's just mind-boggling the ineptitude some, sometimes shown especially at Inter is prone to that almost more than any other club. They are the true, uh, in Germany, they call Bayern the FC Hollywood. Inter, to me, is the true FC Hollywood. Uh, there's so much drama going on all the time. It's just staggering to me. But of course, yeah, Inter looks now much better. Spal beating Lazio 1-0. And I don't quite get why Lazio, they had an away game to Inter. Yeah, they will play at home, but uh, now Spal away. It, it's just crazy. Frosinone, Parma 3-2. Torino, Sampdoria. Sampdoria, the great win against Milan, and then they lose 2-1 to Torino. Don't get it. Yesterday, two uh, relatively clear results. A solo 4 nil against Chievo, and then Atalanta within 15 minutes makes four goals against Bologna. 4-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-1-
during the week. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more of these and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that might be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will give you all the updates on my channel, all things My Soccer Universe. And with that, I want to wish you a wonderful day.